Hi, I'm Wild Bill. Yes, here I am. And uh, I'm reading this, so I can't sit in front of the camera. I was talking about Andean mythography with someone the other night. I remembered a concept, but could not remember the associated name, Ukuku, the spirit of snow. Traditionally, the mountains held vast amounts of water in the forms of ice and snow. The Ukuku was happy in its Arctic paradise. It never troubled itself with the works of man. Of late, however, the mountains are growing threadbare, losing the gravitas of eternal rippling judge's wig and robes of glacial snow and ice. Ukuku wanes, loses the paradise of the heights. Its vengeance is legendary, and it will blame man. Is this inevitable? Probably not. Will it come to pass? It is in progress. I cite Kilimanjaro losing three quarters of its ice in 20 years. What does this mean to the long term, by human standards, rise and fall of solar radiation, the concurrent growth and shrinking of ice caps? Not much. The fossil record is full of promising life forms within flourishing ecologies dispassionately truncated in existence by fractious or intransigent weather and climate. Or volcanism, mountain building, asteroid weather. It happens. According to mainstream theory, many dinosaur clades were already in critical decline when the cosmic spitball glanced off the Caribbean Sea in 66 million BC. The non-avian dinosaurs were already in decline, possibly because of a millions of years long solar cycle in which the late Cretaceous represented a mild nadir. Anomalous tidal activity, such as that experienced if or when a sizable space object passes or passed close to Earth in modern or eldritch days, cannot be included in these theories, as we have zero pertinent data. Still, no sane astrophysical type will deny such close passages occurred during the early epochs of the solar system, that others, perhaps more recent, might be caused by random encounters, can't be considered. It mucks up all the models to no good purpose, scientifically speaking. I've wondered in the wake of Velikovsky if any of the solar system's myriad moons and moonlets are themselves foreign objects, immigrants, or captures. Considering the number of such objects our solar system has apparently objected, ejected, multiplying that by the number of star systems with planet-forming history, there persists a chance, however slight, that many, if not most, star systems have seen such fellow travelers pass through. Some to stay. Is the mysterious moon Titan such an object, or one of the retrograde moons circling elsewhere, or Pluto? I bring this point up when it applies to mountain building. The energy has to come from somewhere, either a deep-rooted cycle of sun and or earth, or a cosmic event such as episodal rather than resonant tidal extremes, or alien subduction. That was the funniest joke ever in science, you were most welcome. My understanding is that Earth and sky are variable entities. As the already as the steady state theory has been for the most part buried with honors, now we endure an active universe. Alla Velikovsky. Does this mean that we as a species, the human race, are incapable of affecting our tiny corner of a variable universe? No. We have already created serious negative synergies with our incessant application of strategies to modify our environment to our liking, if not to good sense. Damming rivers, for instance, has huge effect on ecologies all along river valleys, where dwell 90% of humans. The naval and merchant crude dis distillate oil burned in sea trade is by itself a pollution disaster of a high order, heavily affecting weather patterns across the globe. Methylmercury poisoning of fish and other marine life is a direct result of our mass burning of coal for provision of electricity. Our fisheries regularly endanger and ram into extinction species considered bycatch. We don't even want them, but we kill them anyway. And some of them are critical to the healthy ecology of the sea, which produces the fish we do want. So yes, humanity has a huge impact on weather and the health of every ecology wherein humans dwell in mosques. We change river courses, we dig up canals and dump water ballasts from foreign sources, allowing species from separate eco ecological systems to intermix in unpredictable and sometimes directly damaging ways. Will the Great Ice Age continue? Probably. And this brief interlude between glacial epochs is a somewhat predictable break in the overarching cycle of cooling and warming. Do our efforts as a dominant species of macro-predator and by number and by impact 
And does a globe circling infestation negatively affect our potential for ultimate survival as a species? Absolutely. Does anyone want to hear that? Probably not. So a couple of resonances here. I didn't mean the 11 year sunspot maxima resonance that I talked about long period weather changes and cooling warming. I'm talking tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. Think maunder minimum as the short end of the epicyclic climate, climate stick. And again, talking about things that uh, create changes in climate. Don't get me started on mountain building epics or extensive volcanism e episodes. And again, where does the energy come from? This is Wild Bill. I did this all listening to Beethoven. 